We good? All right. Good morning, everyone. Uh, I'd like to open the Long Range Planning Committee meeting of January 12th, 2024. And I will start by welcoming everybody back and I wish them all a happy to be here. Um, good to see everyone. So our first item on the agenda this morning is to review the minutes of December 8th, 2023. Any comments or motions? Chair, I will abstain from this as I was about to do the last Thank you. We have a motion to approve the minutes. Is there a second? <laughs> Mr. Shanae seconds. So if there is, is there any other discussion? We haven't heard. No. I will ask all in favor. Raise your hand. And we are good. I see that to be almost unanimous. One abstention. Item number two. Um, we are in a position today where we need to elect a chair and a vice chair. I will start with the chair position and would ask if there are any nominations for that position. I would nominate Mr. Allen mm -hmm. as uh, chair. A second. Okay. All right. Anyone else? to be nominated. Seeing none, I will take a vote on that. All in favor? I see that to be unanimous. Thank you. And I appreciate your vote of confidence. Uh, vice chair, are there any nominations for vice chair? <laughs> yes, we do. Um, so, chair is excellent, but we do need to. Yeah. <laughs> so, again, if there's nobody else, and I would like to nominate Mr. Shanae again this year. I'll second that. Okay. Okay with that, Rick? All right. Seeing none others, I would take a vote on that and say all in favor. And we have uh, a unanimous vote on that one. Yeah, uh, a lot of extension. <laughs> yeah. All right. Get my glasses. We can move on. Some things change. Some things stay. Things stay the same, right? Item number three this morning is to review and make a recommendation to the ordinance committee to consider <laughs> increasing the building height permitted in the TVC uh, districts. Uh, I will pass this over to Autumn, but just remind everybody we had a very good discussion at our last meeting and hope that that's something that we can bring to a conclusion this morning if possible. So Autumn, please. Thank you. And again, for those of you, I apologize for my voice and coughing and just bear with me. Um, so last time we had a lengthy conversation about this came in uh, as a request for the TVC district about additional height. And so we, we had a pretty lengthy discussion. Um, this table shows you the different commercial districts in town on the left, and then the existing height that the ordinances allow. And we have districts that allow up to 75 feet, 60 feet, and 45 feet. Those are hidden. So TVC is a particular one in question, and it allows um, up to 45 feet, which is essentially four stories, but a very tight four stories. And so we had some, my original proposal was to add some planning board discretion, discretion uh, for design features and rooftop features and so on. So you can have some gable roofs or some additional screening. So that language in red would look something like this. Um, at planning board discretion for up to 20% increase in height for design features and rooftop screening requirements. That would keep your stories the same as the original intent. Uh, we had a discussion about actually, why are we worried about that? The TBC is a intense district. It's meant to 
to serve a need. And if we're not changing density and we're not changing other things, we're really doing a positive by going up instead of spreading out. And so we have discussion about increasing it up to 65 feet and then why not go to 75 feet to match our highest. And that would allow for a six story, up to a six story building. So what's before you, you all today and then tell me what you would like me to move forward to ordinance committee. The conservative 20% design features 65 feet or 75. Okay, um, I have a couple of questions. Um, First off, in Salamis, they've got the two new buildings they built when we did our tour last year. Uh -huh. When we saw that, do you know how tall those buildings were? Or are? I do not off the top of my head. I have some examples in here. Because they were, I think, five or six stories. But they're five, 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 five four. Four, four. four on the end. Now, I did find out. Um, the public safety building is probably one of our tallest, and it's 48 and I think to 60 or so on the, okay. the tall side. Gotcha. But these are the examples that we have hyper short by the four story building, and it's 60 feet. Gotcha. Uh, and then my other question was <laughs> uh, the TVC zone is the Oak Hill um, yes. zone area. Uh, so we're not usually thinking about these for the other TVC zones. Right. We're just, so this map shows you TVC is just in Oak Hill and then in Dunstan. Right. So we're just mm -hmm. considering it for TVC. Okay. Because okay. the other areas sort of tend to transition into more residential. Mm -hmm. So just, this would be the. I just wanted to clarify and, and understand that. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Could you just confirm that both of those areas all have access to public sewer and public water? Yes. And the building being that brought this to our attention is going to be an apartment building, condominium. This one, the oh, the one that brought us up for uh, the request is an apartment building, and then uh, office mixed use on the ground floor. And actually, was um, one other comment I had in the uh, in the actual draft change of policy. Um, you mentioned um, pedestrian friendly, commercial, and multifamily. Though I just wanted to add um, and mixed use to that as well. So we're Considerably adding mixed use as a concept throughout our our ordinance language. I don't understand. If you look at, I'm looking at page one on agenda three of the uh, uh -huh. the LPRL RPC, the second line for a sentence: <clears throat> functional and pedestrian friendly commercial and multifamily development sites. And you're just saying you'd like both to be able to be in the same building. Yeah, yeah. exactly. I want to make sure that we're emphasizing that. Uh, sure I'm looking at the pay, the materials you gave me. Keep going. There you go. Oh, this is a different item. Got it. Okay, it says agenda item three at the top. So this is a we're talking about agenda. Oh, sorry, it's from last time. Okay. It's not. It's a different one. Okay, when we get to that, then I'll I'll yeah. bring yeah. that up. Yeah, okay. Thanks, Vic. Yeah, Arnold, um, he's the, the picture that you handed out that says people. Uh-huh. Is the building that you that's that's it? That's it, yes. Yeah, they're proposing 55 feet. And from last time, um, the reason they're going up is actually because they have they have a 48 foot tall building, but they need an additional parapet for the screening and the elevator shaft. Is that the um, that's the car wash? Is mm -hmm. second one, the car wash. Right. And the red ray shows how it would be. It's a little hard to get to appreciate the height given the perspective. Mm -hmm. Um, how does that compare with the building that's behind it? Well, across the street from that too. There's there's a couple uh, of other. That's another good. Yeah. yeah. It continuing down. I forget it's called. Yeah. McDonald's Drive, whatever it is. And then the car wash is on the left. And that's a little strip mall on the right. And then a little further, there's a new building. A yeah. New office building, mixed use building. Yeah. Okay. Probably would be 45. It, it's four stories, yeah. I believe. Yeah. <laughs> but again, this is an individual request that came in right. that we want to talk about. Town wide in this district. Yeah. This the other question I have is it's, you're proposing that with planning board discretion. That was or... the first idea. So that if during the site plan review process, Davis came in and it 
very closely met the minimums, but then they needed some flexibility for the rooftop screen. Does the planning have authority to just say yes or no without any kind of? They do. Like, Our commercial bystanders are riddled with that. Okay. <laughs> Why well, all through this process? <laughs> and we're, we're so happy. <laughs> Excuse me. Timing wise, this review is not going to get my support itself through the uh, planning board, the original proposal, and it's based on the survey and the overwhelming opposition in every single way to the pace of growth. So I uh, regret that mm -hmm. um, I can't look at that and see 77, 77% uh, having issues with pace of growth, 25 point. Two to seven point <laughs> seven now. Uh, obviously, that residential growth in that second figure, seventy four percent opposed to the single family rate of growth, multi family seventy two. I just, I can't uh, say we need to go up to sixty five or seventy five feet today. Marvin, I see the survey results as being contradictory with regard to multi family growth. There's also I'm not even getting into the weeds of it. It is so overwhelmingly opposed to the basically growth. But they're also overwhelmingly supportive of affordability housing and, and workforce housing, mm -hmm. which um, would seem to require multifamily development. Um, and and these are for the town and village districts specifically, which have been historically designated as the focus areas for growth and which were designated for focus growth in the comprehensive plan, which was subject to a much deeper dive of public opinion than the recent um, uh, survey. I think I agree, I, I'd like to finish if I might, my first statement. <laughs> and all I'm expressing is my view. Mm -hmm. I certainly respect your view, Peter, and everybody else's view. <laughs> Thank you. I have Autumn, a question. Is, is, is this going to be affordable housing? Is this this particular one that they talked about it as work for us, sir? This one we've talked about with the applicant as affordable or work groups. But just so I just wanted to make clear, I really understand the community survey results. This height change does not change the number of units that can be built on the on the side. Okay. It just changes the configuration. So I just want to make sure that height in the community is something that's restricted. It makes a big impact on perception. Uh, certainly, certainly. Uh, today. Uh, until there's some more clarification about that. I've already stated it, I don't mean to drive it home. That's my position. Thank you. And I do support the original. So ultimately, what, what we're trying to do, I think, is, is reduce the footprint overall, which then opens us up to having more technically green space, I suppose, but says we're going to go up rather than out. <laughs> Yeah, but I may be a perceptual increasing from 45 to 75, 45 to 65, perceptually. And I think perception is what we're really talking about. I think we're all in agreement on that. It's based, based on what I had a chance to review with other with council members, both of whom are in the room, but I've had a chance to review slightly what the idea of this being a perceptual issue. Uh, so that's just my opinion. Rachel, apologize. Robin, excuse me. I'd like to try. I'd like to dovetail onto Portia's comment that what we're trying to do is drive the housing units to places that are designated growth areas where there are services to support the additional units that already have a limit on them. And this allows us to conserve not only the footprint on the site, but in our town as well. So from a conservation standpoint, to, to densify as much as we can in these TVC areas makes sense from a natural resources standpoint because they also have public infrastructure to serve them. Meaning we don't have to build uh, septic systems in areas where we're environmentally sensitive and they be, may be subject to failure more readily. Um, I think this is a very sound and solid um, proposal to improve the height of the buildings in the TVC areas and limit it to those areas. So I'll be in supportive of either um, 65 or 75. Thank you, Peter. 
Um, I'll, I'll dovetail on, on, on Portia's comments and, and on um, Rachel's comments. <laughs> Robin, um, the uh, um, I agree entirely with what was just stated. I'll also say the TVC we've we've seen in um, both town survey results, but also in discussions around the comprehensive plan, that much of Scarborough doesn't feel that we or, or doesn't understand the concept of town center mm -hmm. by having taller buildings. We emphasize the idea that the Oak Hill TVC and the Dunstan TVCs are our centers. Um, they become visually and architecturally more significant and more obviously attractive um, as centers of activity. Um, and, and, and that will encourage, again, both development and appropriate focused growth, I think, going forward. Um, in line with our, the comprehensive mm -hmm. plan, I think that needs to be our, our anchor and foundation in all these considerations. But for all the reasons that Rob mentioned, too, around conservation and, and, and the rest, I, I agree. I, I'd be supportive of proposal one or proposal two. Peter, may I ask you a question? And it's a slightly pointed question. Sure. During the survey, is, is there support for your um, understanding that, uh, generally speaking, town residents don't understand what the town center is? I refer, Marvin, primarily to the comprehensive plan and the work that we did around the comprehensive plan. The, well, that's talking about and you were saying you said that the perception about residents is that they do not understand uh, the concept of the town center. That's where we, where we got a clear view of that in the comprehensive plan discussions and lead into the comprehensive plan authorship. Um, that the 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 and in the discussion around, for example, the Scar uh, the Scarborough Downs proposal for a downtown center. Many people ask, well, why does Scarborough need a downtown center? And the question is exactly for what Robin describes. We have conservation goals, we have comprehensive plan goals, et cetera, that are all supported and driven by the, the focusing of certain types of development in areas which are already served by public works, by public infrastructure, and which don't require um, the, the, the build outs to happen on places like, for example, the new Costco. Bus routes, there's bus routes there. Exactly. So, uh, so I can, I'll finish my, my, my statement here. Um, we, we've got a robust set of data that we generated through years of, of discussions with the town on the creation of the comprehensive plan, which we continue to see as the planning board and the town council consider other focused and concentrated development areas around town. I don't think that data is missing at all. Mark. No, I thought you, I thought you said this, my final shot at it. I thought you said that you had information that the public did not understand yes, that's, the that's, concept of town center and that this would uh, promote their understanding. That, I'm not arguing with anything that has to do with the comprehensive plan, my hands on it too. But if you read those sections of the plan, Morgan, you, you look at the discussion. The whole plan. I have two. All right, guys, yeah. guys, let's, Understood. let's let this one go. Yeah. Um, well, I'm well, happy to take this up this conversation about, between the two of you. If we can, I appreciate your leadership. But it's like Congress. Yes, yeah. I'm not shutting the conversation down. I'm shutting this one sure. down mm -hmm. so that we can get on to something else. It's obviously a disagreement. Mm -hmm. Mr. Chairman, sometimes I think we lose sight of what this committee is all about. We are not a committee that votes yay or nay on adopting something like this. The item on the agenda today asks us to make a recommendation. What needs to be considered increasing the building type? I think what we should do is vote on that recommendation, whether or not we send it to the ordinance committee. And, and, and what goes, the committee should know uh, Margaret's comments and his concern about this mm -hmm. in reference to the survey. But our job is to review, discuss, refine, and ultimately. Move it on to the ordinance committee, which will in turn presumably send it on to the council. So I think you know Marvin's comment should be incorporated in whatever ultimately we send to the ordinance. Committee. Right, but and I shouldn't be voting up and down yeah. on adoption of mm -hmm. change itself. No, I agree, Rick, and I believe that they won't get something specific. I think that what they get is the notes of the right. meeting sure. that Eric has taken that will go to them or the, to the council, which represents the ordinance committee. So they should get that information. It yes. so, just says there was a vote and one no without oh, right. Marvin's comment. Comment. Right. Correct. So, I, 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 anybody I, I, else's I, comments? Yep. Yeah.
One, one second, Robin. I'm not. Uh, Don? Yeah, I uh, want to defer to the committee and let you complete your, your discussion. I have passed um, alternate liaison to the committee. <laughs> but I've spent a lot of time uh, together with you over the past five years working on the comprehensive plan and helping to get these two guys uh, on the committee. Okay, three years ago, um, the appointments committee recommended that we appoint two people uh, from the public who represent the public, okay, people that were not directly or indirectly involved in the development community. Okay, and I've got the notes from that. I brought copies along that I'd like to have included in the in the record. So we did that at a council. Council are the ones who are responsible for appointing committee members. Mm -hmm. So we did that for a clear reason, and we hope that 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 those two roles will be will be filled that way indefinitely. Mm -hmm. I have a question. Um, are, does this committee have any purview over issues involving safety? I, I've read a lot of your uh, dialogue around parking spaces, the number of parking spaces, that sort of thing. But, um, and I know that you tend to have a technical view of recommendations that really tie to the, to the benefits of multi-unit housing and concentrated development. But do you have any concern or any scope to take into account safety issues? I can attest to it. They actually have brought up safety issues, and I've conferred with them, especially for this about height with uh, yeah. Chief Kenlin, just talking to him about this and his concern that if we start to add additional height, we're going to have to make sure that we have enough staff and everything. So, yeah, we don't check that out with uh, Chief Kenlin. Uh, okay, so uh, it's interesting to know that the TBC um, uh, abuts Maple Avenue. That's what sorry, abuts Maple yeah. Avenue. Maple. Maple Avenue, if you're aware, is uh, intimately involved in discussions with the town manager and also with Chief Kimbellen um, and uh, Superintendent uh, Holmquist on the matter of traffic safety. Mm -hmm. yes. Traffic I meant and so forth. So I would, uh, if this is not within your purview, I would suggest it needs to be considered and also added to the record that this is a grave concern. Uh, and uh, we still do not have a policy. We still do not have clear direction or response from the town or from the superintendent or the town manager of this matter. So we actually do uh, have a draft policy, and then the maintenance. They haven't seen it yet. Uh, we haven't. There's a question. There's a technical question that still hasn't been answered okay. about it about um, uh, speed bumps. Okay. Sure. So sure. I I want to make sure that uh, we don't lose sight of that, and this is. The other issue related to this is do we do any studies um, around the impact of traffic uh, in this area? And, and if we do, when is that done? Is it done before we make a decision and a recommendation, or we do that after the fact with a no. PMP? So it's too late. So this is an ordinance change that would apply to TBC very broadly. And then if the applicant comes in through the site plan process, they go through their traffic study. And if the TMP is required based on the fact that that's when we would do. Um, but the TVC, back to the original, like the TVC digital is in the area that has services and utilities. And again, this height discussion doesn't change the number of units or users that would be able to go in. We haven't made any adjustments to density. So 100 units in four stories is still 100 units in six stories. We're just talking about really aesthetics. And to Marvin's point, I think last time Marvin was really leaning more to the height, but in light of the community survey and perceptions, he's now saying, hey, perception of six story looks like more than four story. So, so my, that's my, really my advice as a counselor and also as a person who represents the public mm -hmm. and has a year to ground just like we're being told and we can debate it till the ends of the earth. And actually I'm I'm pleased to see that at least you're having you know point counterpoint on a public representation, <clears> which <throat> I think is probably an accurate reflection. That's why we're going to have to debate on it. But I would, I would recommend that, uh, and, and I don't have any authority to do this other than being a counselor and being a member of the public, that uh, the approach you take be a conservative one and not maximize the height of this particular event. And, and that's the, the that's the kind of conversation I'm going to be having with my fellow council with Chairman McGee in about an hour. Okay. 
Did you say you want to maximize it or not maximize it? I, I would say you take a conservative approach and not <laughs> maximize it and take it pay and yeah. go to the to the yeah. to the uh, not the highest number of feet, um, but the lowest number of feet, you know, not seven stories, four centers, four stories. These this will be very symbolic, okay? Mm -hmm. If the decision is made to do seven stories, uh, I think it would be very symbolic. And I'll leave it with that. Have, have we cleared this with the with the fire department in terms of fire access and rescue? Yes. Okay. Uh, Robin. Yeah. Hey, Thank you. Um, <clears throat> I have a, a couple questions, so bear with me. Um, the first one is parking standards. Will they will will if they are on a bus route, will they be allowed to? not have as many parking spaces? Will they have to have one space per unit still uh, for parking? No, we don't have anything written. The okay. only, we, they would still have our typical um, parking requirements mm -hmm. unless they meet the 50% affordable requirements. Okay. And then they do have a reduction. And that was part of the state mandate with LD2030. Okay, That's so 51% of the units are affordable or workforce deed restricted for 30 years. Exactly, so that's where I'm going, which is that uh, if, if like putting all these people on bus routes, whether it's workforce, affordable, the idea is to not impact the traffic mm -hmm. negatively. Um, but I, you know, I was silent in that assumption. So thank you for bringing that to my attention that, that, you know, the assumption is that, that these apartments will be for people, not necessarily for all people, but mostly rely on bus service or walk to work, that type of thing, a, a true village center. The second, um, I guess, point I'd like to make is I, I really appreciate the civil discourse and the leadership in this in this room because very often I have been in Marvin's position where I am the lone voice of dissent. So I truly appreciate the leadership and the and the uh, for us I'd like I'd like the, the town of Scarborough to really take a leadership role in civil discourse and show the country and perhaps the world how we talk and discuss things civilly. So thank you for that. And as a matter of standard um, uh, in moving forward, I think the dissension when we do have a, a nay vote on on the table or just like we have an abs, like an abstaining vote, I think it's important to note in the, the minutes that go to council what the point of that abstention or dissension is so that council who isn't here has an understanding of what was brought up. So thank you for that. So Rick, I thought was next. Yeah, that was exactly the phrase I had. I guess I don't want to um, repeat myself, but it's, we are an advisory committee. That's how we started. How long range planning committees and advisory committee. In the town council path, we're studying and developing recommendations, et cetera. Uh, to Bill's point, I think yes. The traffic, safety, whatever issues this committee might see in the course of reviewing something like this is important to know in our recommendation to, in this case, I guess the, the ordinance committee. So yeah, I think we're, we're we've got a broad range of issues we can raise. And historically, I remember years ago when we were the Long range, you know, yeah. conference and patient committee. And we got some of the things like this. We struggled a little bit with, well, what do we send on to the council? And I think we generally ended up with providing the council the minutes of the meeting, meetings for a summary of the minutes. And again, noting the position of, you know, certain people on certain issues. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that's, that's the way we should proceed, um, unless we ultimately decide it as a, in fact, I think we might end up sending something like this to the ordinance committee and saying the long range planning committee does not recommend adopting this in this mm -hmm. slide. Yeah. But I do think it's important that we not look upon our role as up or down on things as much as with the initial reviewing body, we have a certain level of expertise on the committee. We have, we have the expertise of staff, 
we vet these things, we raise issues, and ultimately that's what goes to the ordinance committee. So they have an understanding of what the initial review was by the department. So um, I don't know why I'm getting into this so detail, but I, I, I am a little concerned that we get caught up in not fully appreciating our role. And your okay. point is well, safety should be considered on every mm -hmm. exactly. Great job. Yes, uh, I wasn't uh, at the last meeting. I, I do apologize for that. My calendar was wrong. Um, I, there are a couple of things. I I like when the planning board has discretion, uh, as long as that discretion has some parameters, uh, as it says here. For instance, increase in height for design is rooftop screening. Well, that's something we can enforce. Um, <laughs> If if there's not some parameters to the discretion, then all of a sudden we're arguing about two feet here and one foot over there, and uh, it's um, it's not helpful. And, and I can think of a couple of times that it would have been very helpful to have some discretion. Uh, one case was an apartment building where we ended up having the developer do studios on the top floor instead of one or two bedrooms so that it would be lowered specifically to the absolute <clears throat> height. Um, that was a painful discussion. <laughs> the um, one thing to remember is if we, if this committee is interested in recommending the, uh, let's say 65 foot uh, or whatever, it is for the whole district. You, you can't just think about this one building. Um, I have a question about its application to Dunstan because I'm not clear where there would be possibility of building taller buildings, but a developer will try to figure that out sooner or later. The, um, I guess I'm not as concerned, Marvin, about the, the height of the building because it, in this particular case, it is set back and it would be in keeping with the apartment building right across the street basically in terms of height. But there are other places where it a, a taller building along Route 1 would stick out, like, you know, kind of a saw thumb. So if you're going to increase uh, the height and that's an area for that sort of development, provide some guidelines, uh, some visual guidelines so that we don't have what we saw in Falmouth which is all of a sudden buildings at this level and then a couple shooting up high and, and, and they stuck out. So I think there's some additional design considerations along Route 1 that need to be considered. Um, my, my brothers in terms of, uh, I guess, Development is, I, I keep hearing about the need for affordable housing. This allows us that opportunity, I think, with some parameters and some guidelines, which we, at this point, I don't think we have developed. Um, we Just to make sure that we don't all of a sudden have four-story, five-story buildings along Route 1 next to one-story buildings. I was, that's not helpful i was just yeah. going to say based on the conversation we had last time and the conversation we're having today and a lot of the community survey would it be appropriate for this committee to move forward the original proposal that maintains the height but gives the planning board some discretion and include the discussion that when the time is correct or upon further review of the design standards and architecture standards which we're also working on there may be opportunity to increase the height in additional districts such as TVC. But for now, we see the ability to have discretion for some screening. And because we get this question a lot in the building department, um, I want to go up just two more feet because of the way I'm constructing it or the difference and having a little bit more flexibility. Mm -hmm. I think 45 is really close for a four-story building. You're always going to get a flat roof. It's going to be very much the same. And so maybe that's one way to approach it so that we can continue to move on because our next item is to start talking about site layout to Rachel's point, how the building interplays with the street. Um, just an idea. The, the one thing that I would <laughs> say in regards, and I respectfully disagree with you, Rachel, um, 
having been on the planning board for nine years and chair for seven. The one thing that I am very hesitant to do is to give the planning board the discretion as stated. And it's not because I don't trust the planning board. It's because in those nine years, I saw how developers have instituted every possible play that they can to get something that they want that's not allowed by our standards or our ordinances. So, and and, and Alan, will, let me say, I said, uh, one of the things I did say was within clearer parameters. I, yeah, I understand that, but, but without setting those in place, I would much rather pick a height mm -hmm. and say, that's it. Now, if we decide to recommend to raise the height over what it is today or not, that's what we're here to do to some respect in, in Rick's uh, statements. In it, that is to provide a recommendation to the ordinance committee and then they can take those comments and go. But I really don't want to open it up for developers to try to come up and say, well, you know, you can do this. And so they're going to try to push the board to do that every time. I I, I remember after a meeting, having a, a conversation with Rocky, where he said, you know, I knew you wouldn't approve it, but I had to ask. That's his comment. All right. So they're going to push and we know they're going to push. So I'm not in favor of allowing them that discretion. One other comment that I'd like to make, and I would ask Rick and or Karen to uh, correct me if I'm wrong in what I'm saying. When this committee was going through the process regarding re making recommendations about the downs, one of the big items that had lots of discussion to it was how there was a thought of over time trying to take the downs and trying to take Oak Hill and sort of blending that all together, if you will, for a substantial downtown type area for the community. And I also believe that ordinances, or I should say recommendations for ordinance changes, <laughs> is what brought us to that 75 foot height way back when. And as I stated at the last meeting as well, I'm a firm believer that it, one of the best ways for us to try to control growth in the town Right now, because of how our utilities mm -hmm. are set up, how the comprehensive plan sits there and says, we want growth in these areas, that, and again, my personal opinion, but the best way to do that is to go up where we have those services available to us. So I will tell you that I personally am in favor of raising because I think it's the better way for us to build right now in our community um, and try to either delay or suspend any growth on the other side of the turnpike. And let's save our rural space as our rural space. Yes. And build in our populated space. And part of our rural. discussion last time alan was with regard to gables and other architectural features that are really suppressed right now at this height that then perhaps gives some more architectural interest to these buildings i don't know how we simulate stimulate that but that's that's the other piece smaller footprint more architecturally sensitive to the community right right Karen? this, this committee does have a unique position of being um, the protector or, or um, implementer of uh, the comprehensive plan. So I do think that rooting whatever you're talking about with respect to height 
back to the comprehensive plan is super important for this laying out the foundation. Doesn't mean you can't be informed by the survey, but uh, your guiding, your guidepost, um, you know, are the uh, uh, is the comprehensive plan. So I would say, it, <clears throat> if you're not comfortable going the full height at some point, um, if you are planning to do a two-step process, you need to inform the council, you know, that this may be a temporary or a, you know, a uh, a step towards doing something more intense, but I do think you have to go back to the grounding of it, what the comprehensive plan was asking you to do or asking the, the community to do. Right, and, and again, I think part of, part of, part of the solution to the transportation issue we have in town is to help us get to a point where we can make mass transportation work, make it effectively work for the transporter, right? Because financially it's gotta be, it's gotta work for them as well. And the best way for us to do that is to condense where our population is. I'd like to suggest too that when counselors are, are, are asked, what has the town of Scarborough done to alleviate the housing crisis? This would be an incredible thing to point to, to say, we are building as much as we can in our designated growth areas to support public transportation, to help, you know, whether it's the affordable and workforce housing. But even as a member of the public, I want to know what the town of Scarborough is doing to help with the housing crisis that we see in towns within you know a stone's throw of where we are and if we can't do it and if we can't do this then we're not doing anything i think for the housing crisis yeah. john john has had his oh, hand up for yeah. a really long john, time john i know you this is, this I, is, I haven't seen you so, <laughs> yeah, sorry <laughs> 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 this, this is a wonderful conversation and i think it just shows the challenges because you know i'm just kind of keeping track of some of the different aspects that this group is talking about which i think is really in my opinion what would be helpful is to get a recommendation that really shows that you kind of contemplated these different cons and benefits and ultimately as a as a group how you come to your consensus decision on what you think is best for Scarborough because growth clearly is a concern so what would be un what I think council and maybe ordinance may ask staff is with this adjustment, what does that mean in terms of growth potential in the long run? And we've done analysis in the past, how it's like in each district it allows for up to X. Mm -hmm. What would this actually do to that? Um, and I know that public transportation was also something in the survey where, you know, if there was clear um view by the public that we don't do well in public transportation. A big reason of that is because we don't have the, the we haven't reached that tipping point that allows for it. And again, continuing to make that pathway could help with that eventually, which would alleviate traffic. To Councilor Hamill's point about, <coughs> about safety, I'm, I'm on the transportation committee and uh, past week, we actually had she come in and talked about our high crash locations. And I'm, Pretty sure and confident that it's really in that TDC zone where we where we have our high crash location. So understanding the consequence of if we do this and if, if it balloons, what pressure does that put on those high crash locations to make sure we can address those? Um, I love the concept, and I thought I heard Robin you say this um, by going up potentially allows for more green space. So how do we make that? actually happen as part of this. And I don't know if that's part of the design standards or things that we could say that if you go up, you mm -hmm. must have more green space. Mm -hmm. And that's a, a requirement if you wanna be able to do that. Um, again, the affordability workforce housing portion, you know, to your point, like also Rachel, being able to say, this is one way we're trying to do that. Um, it's not the only way, but it's another way, another arrow in our quiver. And of course, the comp plan always as our guide for, for making these decisions. The one thing I will say, though, and I think it goes back to Marvin's comment, is we already have very friendly zoning, probably more so than any other community in the state of Maine, which is why we're growing as rapidly as we are. 
this makes us even more friendlier. And I think the temperature of the community right now around growth, which I know the council will really contemplate, would look at this as a, in my opinion, probably would look at this as a, a, a tone deaf um, reaction to the survey results that would essentially, you know, continue the, the comment that the town is not listening to what people are saying. And so even though I can sit here and justify all the benefits of this, that is, I think, going to be weighing very heavily on counselors when this comes forward. Where where we have an agenda item um, this coming meeting that would really kick the can deliberately, I think, on the affordable housing and hotels because again, it just it's one of those things. I think the council has when we think about growth, even though again, I can justify what it's good. Uh, growth is is definitely the concern. So. I'm just sharing that just to kind of say, like, there's a lot of good reasons why to do this. There's also consequences that I think, um, as this goes forward through the process, I could see this not going very far, to be honest, or again, probably following that same suit of what we've done for the hotels in terms of taking the can. So I say that meaning like this group can continue, should continue to debate this, um, so not feel the urgency, I think, to get an answer out of this meeting to move it to ordinance because I think I could see this being really slow roll through the process given we need to do more to dig into that sort of um, conversation with the community. But it's just to kind of talk about that. Um, do you think it would be okay to go with the original proposal and to allow that discussion and then kind of to get ordinance committee and council say, hey, we're we're thinking about this in long range, but this is a it's a it's a band-aid. I mean, I'll call it what it is. It's a band-aid, but it's also an opportunity to fix some things that we've seen across the board, but it wouldn't have the perceptual uh, just huge, you know, six-story thing. I think that might be I don't want to belabor it, I guess. I want we have a lot to do this year. Um, and so I want to to say let's 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 make a recommendation and I'll, I'll I'll bring up all of our points with it and have a discussion in ordinance. And maybe if they're on board, okay, we're, we're okay with going up an extra 10 feet. Um, we're not okay with going up an extra 20 feet because that changes the number of stories. And maybe we can just move that along and then keep this in the back of our mind as we're moving through the rest of our design standards that we're discussing. Marvin? Uh, following what you said <laughs> Alan, about uh, developers, Give with an inch, mm -hmm. give with your hand, it'll take your arm. Mm -hmm. Don't think that this quote is. The raising the height will, and certainly building on what Councillor Patterson just said, uh, raising the height will enable not so much sprawl. Mm -hmm. you know, this is my point. Absent mm -hmm. the check in place. The restraint in place against sprawl and height. I mean, this only opens another avenue. It doesn't place any restraint on sprawl, and I'm using, you know, common terms. And I, don't, I, don't even, you know, I think you get my point that way. Um, and there are a few other comments I might take listening to everybody's, but, you know, responses. But I would like to take the opportunity to follow on what you said and for a vote, I would I'm making a motion to, uh, however you put it, approve, recommend, approve the, uh, approve the recommendation for the original proposal, uh, which I think we all know what it is and what that means. Uh, today, and as best as I can say it, I make that uh, proposal. I am making that proposal that we take a uh, vote or at least a show of hands on whether or not we agree to move forward with the original proposal to ordinance. I won't. I won't be seconding that motion. Uh, that motion because uh, this is an incredibly missed opportunity if we do this. Uh, I appreciate the discussion. Yep. But I need a second before we go any further. Okay. 
Is there a second? On second it's okay, so that we move. So now for discussion, I think. Missed opportunity, and I would challenge any of the counselors to, or staff uh, to assist someone in the, 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 the committee to, to write an article about what a missed opportunity this is to comply with the uh, comp plan, uh, to apply consistency from the Downs development and standards to Oak Hill. And if this is a missed opportunity to um, make a huge impact in the housing crisis and the, the traffic concerns in Oak Hill. Is there any other discussion? I have a comment. Alan. I Four year old get to you. <coughs> uh, two things. I, I hear what uh, what uh, Robin is saying, and uh, you know I I've sat through many of these meetings, and um, I want to go back to a comment that Britt made that were purely advisory. Mm -hmm. Don't don't underestimate um, the impact and influence that this committee has. I don't know the math, but I cannot recall a single long range planning recommendation that wasn't ultimately accepted entirely or modified slightly. Uh, and I don't have the numbers, but I don't remember a single. So once that snowball starts rolling, <laughs> I will also say that, and I am gonna sign up for a uh, counselor, uh, What's it called? The little articles that counselors get to write. I had one last year. I, I volunteer to do counselors corner on this very topic and for the next issue that will probably be February. Because uh, what happens is uh, April Scyther ends up writing all of <laughs> and uh, on this very topic because I predict what will happen is if you put this forward for the seven stories and we haven't even <laughs> talked about TVC and Dunstan, okay? This will be a lightning rod, guaranteed. And I don't make predictions lightly. Uh, and I have reasonable ear to the ground, um, you know, in my uh, number one spot. And um, this guarantee will generate a lot of chatter. And what's happened, and one final point, is what's happened over time, and I know Robin is very intimately involved with this, other factors that we reference in our comprehensive plan have become more important. We're likely going to have another flooding incident this weekend. Okay, we're going to shut down Route One again. We're going to shut down the Ten Point Road. Yeah, we got a we got an email on Monday from the state saying here are your FEMA map, uh, ordinances. So hurry up and get these implemented by June. Okay, <clears throat> so those things that we reference lightly in the comprehensive plan have become much more important. And the, the Green State States conversation, I think, is, is is essential. We need to look at the whole picture. If we're in a different world now than we were five years ago. So that I would offer that for, for reflection. Thank you, Bill. Of course. Uh, yeah. 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 I get it. <laughs> I didn't know we looked at one. I know that. Right? <laughs> we are. <laughs> yeah. 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 So, <laughs> so I'm sorry. It, can I? Yes. What I would suggest, and and to Rachel's point, and to your point, Alan, is maybe we consider somewhat of a compromise and take away the discretion and take the height up to either fifty or fifty-five feet, which then begins to get to some of the design features. Um, I just, I just hate to have the planning board stuck in the middle of one more dogfight. Yeah, that, that, that was going to be my comment as well. And I was going to, I, I, I don't support the original proposal um, for both the lost opportunity, number one, and the, uh, and because of the discretion issue on the planning board. I think that just creates um, a confusion more than anything else. But I would propose, for example, 55 or 60 feet. It adds a story. It clearly adds a story to what is um, what, what what exists now. Um, Fifty five would be the original proposal, just without discretion. Um, so that would be a good one for me. Or or sixty feet, because sixty is a round number. Frankly, is I, I like round numbers. Um, but but um, uh, but I, I think um, I won't be um, in favor of the original. But if we were to um, to move forward with the proposal, one A say at fifty five or sixty feet, 
I would be strong. I, I think that also fits with Don's comment on um, on uh, you know be conservative here. Don't don't, don't jump to seventy five feet all at once, um, but add some discretion and see how the community tests uh, tests and reacts to that. <laughs> yes. Oh. I'd like to use this as a as an opportunity to to educate the public to let them know that we're going we you know the majority of us thought that you know let's maximize it for these reasons and I challenge the counselor who I really appreciate to put this into an article to talk about how we need to have these conversations and educate folks that as our as our coastal areas are getting disintegrated, you got to go to higher ground. And and guess what? In these TVC areas where we have public services, it, Rick, it, it's a missed opportunity. Yeah, thank you. I grew up with a very close friend whose name is Bill. <laughs> when I when I hit seventies, I found myself reflecting. Mm -hmm. I'm not young again. Are you are you suggesting that any change is likely to be controversial? I can't I can't say for sure. I, I, I don't think it's gonna go silently. I think there'll be discussion. I think there's a much better vote for a compromise uh, recommendation leading off. And I understand all these the, the reasons and benefits that, that Robin is making. Um I, I get that. Part of the issue is <laughs> And, and our commitment to affordable housing, I think we've been courageous in this space. It's been a headbanger, but I think we've done more than our fair share. The issue is on who's dying, okay? We're getting all this stuff from the state. Here you go, do this. Where's the money, okay? What about the $1 billion surplus we have that's supposed to go back to taxpayers anyway? Where's that money, and why doesn't that go to comments like this? So I'm, you know, I don't want to get off on political land, but, <laughs> but uh, so, I, okay. Uh, but again, oh. to finish up. Uh, the motion on the floor is to go forward with the original proposal. Is, right. Are you saying even that could be problematic? I mean, I, is it your sense that that will be? I, I, I will say it won't go silently. Okay. I okay. can't predict what, but this is the four or five story versus seven. No, so the original, many words, I, right? I, I, so the original proposal is there it's 45 feet right now but they would have up, which allows for four stories so planning board would have discretion for up to uh, 10 more nine more feet so 54 feet um for design features and rooftop screening only so that's that's what it means the stories stay the same they just have some design features uh, that's the original yeah screening yes. and a pair of boats and a gable here and whatnot I, I would just tell you my position on this and i have a lot of thought and don't hold me to this but my current thinking is if we have not addressed maple avenue's issues with speed bumps i suggest you're not doing anything okay that's what i would say and, and I'd i know say that's it's... also something in motion but i'm thinking very tactically now and i haven't had a lot of conversation with my I know it comes to me. Two comments. I'll take one from Robin at one point and uh, take one from you as well. And go ahead. You were so, first. so my perspective or thoughts based on what I'm hearing is I, I would prefer for, if this was to move through the process to be more specific and giving planning board discretion, I think is a little squishy. The reason I like something more specific like 55 feet is it gives us an opportunity to sort of have the conversation with the mm -hmm. public. And so as it goes through ordinance and as it goes through the process, this to me is actually um, a really good candidate, like the short-term rentals, to have a council partner live with the public and say, hey, we're contemplating this. But we're going to start the conversation at 55 feet. We want feedback as it goes through the process. And maybe at the end of the day, the council may not support it for, for whatever reason. But I think it's it's really important, given all of these things, for us to be able to have a conversation. I do think it it's going to be focused on growth and growth management, but what we need to do a better job as a as a as a town is helping um, inform and educate the public on all the different pros and cons of some of these choices that we're trying to make, and see what the public thinks ultimately, and use that as as guidance in, in our ultimate decision making. So, at first, I was like, "Well, we, we could slow row this," but I I really think this could be a good conversation starter with the public on growth that could help us really kind of have something that we can ground that conversation in with, with something like this. 
I, I, I do think I agree with Don that it will be a lightning rod and it's, you know, but I think we have to have the conversation. And Rob, my comment was, was sort of dovetailing on that, that we need to have a workshop. We should workshop this and bring the points in that the three of us were making that this raising the height actually drives the growth into our designated growth areas. And that this is what we want to do so that we can conserve the green space yes. and that we can support the public transportation that we're so desperately to get people out of their vehicles and into public transportation and a number of other reasons and, and how, it, how it complies and is consistent with the comp plan and this missed and what a missed opportunity this is. I'm gonna keep saying missed opportunity. Did you guys know this is a missed opportunity? Okay, I'm <laughs> missed opportunity. Okay. <laughs> All right, Go thank you, I'm done. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, I had it. Um, I, was, first. I was just gonna say, you could, um, you could have that forever the planner and how to get things through. Um, so you could amend it to where it's 55 feet, four stories up to 55 feet would be the extremely safe way mm -hmm. to allow the project that requested this to move forward or really? maybe others, but you're not increasing the stories, you're just increasing the roof space. So maybe that's the extreme and that is, it opens the conversation and allows the council corner live, but it also moves a, what could be a really beneficial project uh, forward. Uh, in a timely fashion, what do you think? <laughs> Mark, uh, as opposed to amending the planner's recommendation, I listening, I'm going to withdraw <laughs> my motion, and certainly it's up to another member who makes a motion that the planner recommended. All right, so I'm a little lost on Robert's rules here. So Actually, do I? We, we have to vote on that because we've had a second. I, I, I understand that, but if he withdraws, he has to, has to withdraw to as well before it drops. Mm -hmm. That's what I wanted to make sure. So, my sense is we're heading towards not making a recommendation today, but maybe further studying this or something. Well, I, I, I really wanted to make a recommendation today. I disagree, Rick. I, that's not what I heard from this as well. <laughs> well, maybe. Could we amend the recommendation with after discussion to be if, four stories up to 55 feet? All right. So I if Rick withdraws his second, that motion is off the table. We can then discuss a different motion mm -hmm. if it is so moved and seconded. Mm -hmm. Correct. I, I was a parliamentarian for a labor union. <laughs> so <laughs> this stuff is easy. Yeah, that would be correct. So that's where we are. So, and, and, if, and if he doesn't, I believe we have to take a vote. Or, if he does not, yeah, if he does, if, 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 if somebody not would draw, then we then need somebody would call the question, or you could rule that it's time. Or I'll file a grievance. Or I'm happy to withdraw my withdrawal. We can take a vote. Oh, I know, right? Um, I, I'm. I mean, the end of the era, so I just seconded Mark's motion for discussion. Ahead. Okay. So if it'll move us ahead for me to withdraw my second, I do so. I think it does. Okay. Yep, does. Okay. So I do. All right. So now, we have enough. I'm sorry. Yeah. Yeah. As we now move on, it's going to move to the next stage. All right. So now, we have an opportunity to either table this to another time, or we would need a second motion to continue discussion. Peter. Motion to continue discussion or a new motion? Uh, new motion, yes. So I would move that we have a proposal 1A, which would be up to five stories and 60 feet. The reason I propose that is somewhat what um, uh, 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 John mentioned here. I think that supports moving the discussion forward with the town. It gives sort of, it is a little bit of a lightning rod, but it, it's kind of an intentional lightning rod. And we know that I think there'd be right behind that, we as a group would be fine then subsequently um, working with the council to say four stories and 55 feet is a great idea too. Yep. But I think for a light or for an approach to move the discussion with the town forward, 
I would say five stories and 60 feet. Um, and I'll have that as I'll, I'll, mo I'll move that. Second. Second. Which are you moving? I that we have a proposal 1A. It's not on the sheet here, but that we would have a minimum of five or, or up to five stories and a maximum height of 60 feet. Second. So we have a motion in the second. Any discussion? Seeing none, I'll call for a vote. I just think it's a good compromise, sir. Okay. Uh, I would ask for a vote then. All in favor of the proposal of five story, 60 feet limitation, please raise your hand. We have three. Portia. Uh, Portia, four. Okay. Chair. And the chair, do you I vote? say no. Okay, gotcha. Four tips. Or two. Who's the two? Uh, Alan and Mark. And Mark. All right, let's go. <laughs> All right. Alan, I'm sorry, just one one comment. Um, I don't know the order of things. If Don wants to write a council corner about this, it does seem like staff or staff in conjunction with the chair draft a memo that lays out all of those those pieces that we've talked about today because i don't think it's sufficient to just say hey it supports affordable housing housing i think the council needs a clear line of where does this come from why would we do it that type of thing i guess my my second was contingent on the fact that those things were still happening that there would be a council corner yeah. discussion about this and a workshop and some other sort of document coming from this group talking about uh, what was the word? Missed opportunity. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, 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 I'm, I'm, I'm on the communications committee, so okay. I will make sure Thank you. we follow up on an article of the Council of Corner Live, and I'll talk to the chair about a future workshop with long range of this or to go to ordinance, mm -hmm. I guess. So I don't want to, <clears throat> we may need to wait for those. Like, I want to respect the process and let them have their conversation. On this, and then we can figure out whether it goes to the full council. This would probably be a good conversation, maybe a little bit later in the year, as we start to talk more about site layout and architectural standards. So I think we have some other things coming up, but it won't it won't be, be a full put package. on package. Right. Right. Yeah. And and I just want to be clear too that my 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 motion was this is a communication opportunity for them to do anything. So yeah. um, uh, we, we can expect some response. We can expect potentially this coming back to us in a different form. But uh, the idea that we can move, assist the council in moving the discussion okay. about this forward is as, is as valuable as yeah. the yeah. recommendation itself. Rick, did, did we finish that vote? Yes. <laughs> Just quick research. When a, when a member of a motion seeks to withdraw before the chair has basically put it on the table, but the, the mover doesn't need permission. Once the chair, you know, entertains the motion and there's a second, then the mover seeks to withdraw. The mover has to get permission from the chair. And if this objection to the withdrawal, then that goes to the vote. In any case, the seconder does not need to consent. Okay. Now this is quick, you know, internet research, but I think that's <laughs> the way it works out just for future. Okay. Yeah, I like I say, I when it comes to Robert's yeah. rules on that item, <laughs> I'm, I'm out of I'm out of the game on that. Good idea. Yeah. Right. All right. Our next item this morning is to review and make a recommendation to the ordinance committee. Concerning Chapter 405B Site Plan Standards and Commercial Design Standards Merger slash Update Draft Site Layout Standards. And I think we can go ahead and take away the right, make a recommendation to Ordinance Committee away from that. I thought the height conversation would take about five minutes. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Mom's sake. So we're back to site utilization and layout. And this is where we were on track moving along. With this section in the commercial design standard consolidation and we got the request last month. And so this is really all about <coughs> how the layout of the property takes place for commercial. And so where the buildings are placed, 
Uh, it doesn't apply to individual single family or two family dwellings, and it doesn't apply to RF, R2, any of that. Um, but it does apply to multifamily. Yes, multifamily. And again, yes. if we can insert language where appropriate here to discuss the call out mixed use. We're, and yeah, now that we're on that, tell me again, Peter, please. please. So the, the, the first sentence is where I first see it. It um, uh, primary goal of site plan review process, et cetera, for a fundamental oh. and pedestrian friendly commercial and multifamily development site. And mixed use. And mixed use. And there's a couple of other areas where it calls out mixed use. And when we specifically talk about multifamily, uh -huh. we should also talk about mixed use okay. in that context. When it's just commercial, we probably don't have to. Yeah. And then we might think about different site plan standards where you don't have potentially family or seniors or just folks walking around. Um, in, in a way that a, a, a true commercial only site would have, but uh, yeah. So this, um, and again, I don't know if you recall, the yellow is what the changes were from the last time we talked about it. So a lot of strides and some changes. The purpose, the applicability statement, um, this wouldn't apply to village residential because they have their own standards and everything, even though they do allow some commercial. Does that mean it also wouldn't be TVCs? TBC would have. Would work. Okay. Uh, so general standards, uh, structures and impervious areas is not underway. No changes on this away from all our natural features. We did add this language here that buildings shall be located as close to the front property line as possible. So that was from the commercial design standards. And we put with the majority of parkings, we we took out some scale and interest language. Um, and then moving parking lots to the rear concentrates people in places along the street with new language. And so this is something, I think for the sake of today and the time we have left, I'd like to go through what we were really talking about was um, setbacks and making sure the setbacks worked with what we were trying to say because we have maximum front yard setbacks and minimum front yard setbacks sometimes that don't actually allow you to be right on the street and so let's just if you kind of go through let's just have a conversation looking at loop one <clears throat> just give me one second i'll change <laughs> So what I wanted to talk to you about is how parking lot and buildings sort of interact with some real-time examples that we're all familiar with. And so Scarborough um, Route 1 was an, is an excellent case study because all sorts of things are happening. So and this really gives us an idea of what we're comfortable with and what we want to, because of some of our setbacks allow for one row parking, some of them don't allow it. We're saying we don't want parking in the front, but the setbacks are so great that we get it no matter what. So we really need to make sure everything works together. So this particular example, there's one row of parking. So that's a, a 20 foot drive aisle and 18 foot parking. And then you have the green space. So it's still quite a bit from the street. And there's lots of examples of this, but is this a, a good example? You know, thumbs up, thumbs down. That's generally what we're trying to figure out as we go through site layout for commercial. So being true to our name, long range planning, I'm thinking of, something's going to have to happen to Route 1 some of these yeah, days. Yeah. So where does DOT's right-of-way end and begin? Because what I'm contemplating is if we move all the buildings forward, then, uh, you know, eventually if things need to, if Route 1 needs to, you know, overtake its current, you know, boundaries and get expanded, are the buildings then right up against Route 1's right-of-way? So the right of way right now for this, for, I don't know the specific section, but it's generally just outside the curb. So it's, so it's maximized. Yeah, I think it's maximized. And we're doing a visioning process with um, communities from Arundel all the way to Freeport for Route 1 for yeah. the consistency. And it's pretty exciting because we had a meeting to talk about really trying to figure out what Route 1 looks like. And right now it's this sort of major thoroughfare, but is it really appropriate to be that? Should people be using Route 1 
to pass through Scarborough, they should have a turn five through the one, should really perhaps look a little different than it looks now. Maybe rather than growing, it should come in so that the businesses and redevelopment opportunities along that. Anyway, it's all yep. philosophical, fun Does discussion. Does that mean eliminating curb cuts and sort of putting, <laughs> okay. Mining shared access. And feeder and streets all that, and things. Okay. You know, all that is a very long-term approach. Okay. But when I looked at Route 1, there's some pretty, probably I'd say within the last 40 years, it's extremely inconsistent. Mm -hmm. And these pictures really tell that story. But well, if you just visualize driving from Arundel to Freeport on Route 1, Mm -hmm. You're going through some very different setups sure. for the road there itself. Yeah, and, so. and some different purposes for the road. Yeah. And Scarborough in and of itself, like this one has one row of parking. Um, this one's further set back with two rows of parking. And then um, I don't show that. This one, you know, of course, there's no parking. It's a drive out only. You get into this, there's two rows of parking. It's just a parking lot. It's just really, uh, you know, Again, one row parking. So we're really all over the place. And for this discussion, for changing this part of the design standards, we really need to pick something. And it works within any right of way, right? So if we pick it, um, the right of way is property line, so it would still work. Yeah, I'm really trying to define the style of what we're wanting it to look like. I, I can picture a style. I don't have a problem mm -hmm. with that. What my concerns are is <laughs> one, what will the state actually allow us to do? Because my understanding in the past, when we've had discussions about one, there were conversations that we had, and I, I want to go back to the CPIT days when we were reviewing this, and we had talked about trying to, and, and if people can think of what I'm talking about, but when you first enter into South Portland, you go back past the, the exit 45 interchange. And then shortly after that, Route 1 goes to one lane with an esplanade in the middle of the road. Yep. All right. So from a traffic coming perspective, we had talked about, can we do something like that? Yeah, but that's not what we're talking about right now. I understand. So, yeah, I, I understand. I think we still can. I but think. the point was... I believe that when we looked at that, we were told we would not be allowed to do that because of the volume of traffic that still is being used on Route 1. <laughs> and even though we were trying to do traffic calming within the town mm -hmm. and hopefully get people to start using the turnpike or a different road to use as a pass through. The other item that came up was, and that surprised the heck out of me, was that only 25% of the traffic on Route 1 was passed through. And that blew my mind. How can, you know, it just didn't seem reasonable that only 25% was passed through traffic and the rest of the traffic was actually being generated by Scarborough residents. Mm -hmm. So what, well, to me, before we start determining what we want from the road to the front of the buildings to look like, we need to understand what we physically can and can't do to rule on. Well, I, don't, I, I, think won't, that I won't be able to provide that answer to you in this format. I, I mean, I think the purpose of this is we're trying to take care of what we can control. Yep. And so the GP COG effort to revision, re envision Route 1 is going to take going out for RFP for consultant work and to work with all the communities. That's probably a two year process. Okay. And I think for this discussion, we're trying still to consolidate what we have. And my point for Route 1, and this applies to everywhere, so Tang Road, I guess, and whatnot, all of our commercial standards, we've been very inconsistent in our messaging and what we require. Mm -hmm. And our standards allow very inconsistent reviews. And you can see like this site plan went through this time frame, like this stuff was okay, and this was okay. And really just sort of, sort of writing that in a bit so that we know what we'd really like to have. So we don't have necessarily this hodgepodge of development as it goes through. That's all I think really the purpose of this. Mark. As I understand <laughs> Autumn's question, we're talking correct, but 
We're talking visuals. Mm -hmm. Okay. My opinion about that is I'd rather see architecture closer to the road than automobiles parked in parking lots. Yep. Agreed. Portia, did you have your hand up? Yeah, I was going to say, and, and being on the transportation committee, obviously there's some of these issues that are near and dear, but one of the issues about moving the buildings closer to the, the street is also <laughs> making sure we've got continuous sidewalks so that there is access, there's a signal that somebody can easily walk or bike to that building and not have to fight traffic to get into it. And, and the other part is, do we have two different standards designs, pick the right words, in certain areas along Route 1? Because there's clearly differences along Route 1. Mm -hmm. And a standard I don't think would fit, depending upon where you are, especially if right. you're looking at so like, we talked about like, doing bundles of. Well, yeah, that's going to have different, that's going to come out with typologies. The vision, the Envision Route 1 is going to be really an interesting, um, it's going to have, you know, pass-through typologies and village typologies and yeah. different okay. cross-sections. And this is how you're, yep. so when you're continuing on, there's some continuity. That stuff is going to be, it's really cool if it works out. Um, but this, we have talked about doing things per village. And so for architecture, that's how we wanted to look at things. And yeah. so if you, this right now is sort of a standalone section, but if we really want to just roll it back into architecture and talk about each village, maybe that's easier to mm -hmm. chew on each section mm -hmm. of town. Like this one, we want the buildings up close. This one, we don't care. Yep. Maybe that might just be easier to consume. I think I think that's a really good idea, uh, Autumn, to go in that direction because Route 1 is so complex. And this town is so complex because mm -hmm. we've never had a town center. Mm -hmm. We've had multiple villages mm -hmm. kind of a thing. And then also, I, I would like to go on the record as saying, I'd like to caution us about putting the buildings right up close to whether it's the sidewalk or whatever, because if you have a building, you know, with a long queue line to get in, you know, you're backing traffic up into, you know, route one kind of a thing. And I think about it like when there's a rollover on the turnpike and people get shoved to route one, we don't have any parallel road to route one to like alleviate traffic. So I just think long term I don't want us to turn into I'm not saying I want us to turn into Danvers Massachusetts but think about where what right route one looks like in Massachusetts Absolutely. yeah my only comment is just piggybacking off of Portia to, to Robin's point that long term if we're thinking of public transportation and we need to have room for buses and things like that just a consideration as we, we work through this uh, one thing and I'm a little late, and I apologize. We are darn near out of time. Mm -hmm. And still have several things I'd like to try to get to on the agenda before we uh, adjourn. So given that, uh, Eric, I have not seen... Oh, yes, we might have. Uh, we might have public on this morning. And any public comments? Nope, that's just Portia and Autumn. Oh, okay. <laughs> all right. I thought it was somebody else. I didn't know if it was Alice. Um, <laughs> are we not dealing with that? Well, I, I need to move on in order to cover some other things like staff updates and we'll just table it. We'll just continue before before we run out of time. I just want to make sure so, staff has. I heard that we're going to come back and talk about this more deadly. Combine it with oh, yeah. architecture Good. and bring yeah. it back. Yeah. Okay. So I apologize that we started but didn't get or you didn't even get a chance to finish. But I also try and respect people's time. Karen, did you have something? I I do. If you're going to go on to staff updates or yeah. questions, yeah. I have, I have a request yeah. that's question. May yeah. I ask a very quick question? So the question the the questions remain the same. It's a visual question. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Thank you very much. All right. Sorry, Don, one thing before we before I back to this. I have a process question with regard to how the committee works. Um, going back to Don's comment about so many things go through the process well that the committee recommends. 
part of that was the old CPIC process of saying, when we finish and make a recommendation, we've gone out to the affected community, not to sway them or whatever, but to present what we're doing before it goes to the council. Correct. Now, I don't know if that's something we still wanna do, or we're saying, no, that gets taken care of at <coughs> ordinance, um, but particularly this one, um, it, it, the height one might be one that you do want to have a meeting of the business community in the Oak Hill and Dunstan area and allow them to comment on, hey, what does this mean? What would this mean for infill development and other things? But it's really less that and more of a process yeah. question. Is that something we're going to do when we finish segment? Let's um, yeah. go out to the. You know, it's something areas. that we haven't done for a while, right. but. Remembering back, it was highly effective. Yes. Um, and in the, I, I, I guess, from my perspective, should this item <laughs> that we spoke about at length this morning come back to this committee, I think that that's an excellent way to proceed. Um, if I guess I would have to think a little bit more yeah. or get get suggestions from the committee in terms of should we workshop it with the council first or should we go to the public and invite the council to be part of that process as well so that they can hear the comments and then come back and rework and i don't necessarily think you you know i'm not talking directly about this one i think as you go forward making right. that decision and i think one of the differences is we didn't have that second step of going to ordinance committee first. Correct. So that's the question of where this right where should things fall. And and most of the members of the committee, save you and Rick and I, know that process right. that we went through, right? Because it was years ago. And yeah. so I can tell you what I do with the process for like landscaping, for instance. It came through you all and spent four or five months with you. And then I've reached out to landscape professional and interacted with them and gone through several public meetings and on the website. All of our draft ordinance consolidation is on that, and I send it to developers and people that I know, like lighting. Hey, look at this, you know, yep. run it through, um, where it's not a specific, like, big town hall production. Right. Um, I do get input in that regard. So that's how I've been pursuing So I think that's important just to, to say when 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 we would do a neighborhood meeting, if you will, and I think that's what most of them are. And yeah. it's probably a little bit of a different situation because um, before we were always doing, um, we were doing a lot of zoning changes right. that affected a neighborhood. Yeah. Yeah. So okay. I think this is something right. that- And I think it, I, because this particular <laughs> item really raised a lot of counter, suggestions that might be a real good indicator that maybe we need to take the next step before we actually make a recommendation to the ordinance committee of the council no i just want to say i love this conversation <laughs> again another survey result in the survey was that the public feels like they're not adequately involved in the decision making process and right. i think part of it is i don't know if we have a best practice process and it sounds like maybe there was one in the past that I would love to we use like I, I really like this can we build a best practice especially because it's associated with a highly controversial potential issue with the public that we need to kind of bring the public along appropriately both the business community and the general public so I love the idea of figuring out like what is that yeah, best I, practice and how do we use this as an example to see if we can look through it. I'd be happy to talk with you if you've got a few minutes after the meeting because yeah. it we used it highly effectively back during the comp comprehensive plan implementation committee of the 2006 yeah. plan. So and I don't necessarily think we have to hold up whatever is yeah. going yeah. to the ordinance committee, but I, I think it's a I think it's item for something for us to remember mm -hmm. for sure. Um, any other staff comments? Uh, I don't have any. Is there a pick member comments? Rachel. No, nope, been a planning board meeting. Uh, 
on Tuesday, uh, we've gone to a month, we've gone to a monthly month schedule meeting, yep. now, <clears throat> which I think, uh, Autumn, has that been helpful for the consultants getting their stuff in on time? Yes, it's been really helpful for them. I think in staff, we had our first uh, developer review committee. So we're in implementing this process where we actually have our peer reviewers and our internal reviewers and applicants together talking through comments. Yeah. And the whole purpose of that really is to have that dialogue. So we're not trying to arrange last minute conversations and getting uh, comments, but we had a good dialogue and we had actually one applicant say, hey, let's not take this to the planning board yet. There's some things we need to square away first. And that's the whole purpose. Okay. Yeah, it, it, it's the, the hope is that when something comes before it's really complete yeah. uh, and has been vetted and if um, if there remains problems, we get that information in the staff memos or on the Monday meetings, the Zoom meetings that I have with the with the staff. Yeah. Um, so we've got that as a as a red flag if a developer has decided it doesn't care, it's going to come to us anyway. Okay. Thank you, Robin. Yeah, I'd just like to, um, <clears throat> I'm reckoning back to my planning board days when we had a lot of um, uh, properties that were inundated and flooding for some reason with all kinds of development happening around them. And as we experienced these extreme weather events and uh, sea level rise happening faster than we anticipated, um, I think we're going to have some some infrastructure issues that I encourage us all to think long term, not two to three years, what we'll see in our lifetime, but 50 years and to 100 years in advance. Okay. Eric, I forgot to ask you. Earlier. I am all set. Thank you. All right. Oh, yeah, I'm oh, sorry. I'm sorry. I go back to wrong quick. Sorry. I always feel like I talk too much in these meetings. Uh, our vulnerability assessment, we just did, uh, staff is interviewing <laughs> final consultants for that. I don't get kicked off in <laughs> February. And our open space uh, master plan, the RFQ is out and closing soon, but that'll get kicked off. All right. Thank you. Great. Uh, Mari, comment. I wasn't here last meeting, and I would say I appreciate the thorough comments. They were helpful to understand what we're here. Good. Conversation that he met uh, this week, very. A formative meeting, uh, GP called uh, by Chris Shaw presented their Vision Zero uh, initiative, uh, which is about having no accidents, uh, no pedestrian accidents, no uh, deaths uh, from transportation. Uh, and Chief Holmquist uh, presented high crash locations information. The entire meeting was taken up by that. The upshot because nothing was decided other than that is information. Uh, as my take on it, the upshot was the Transportation Committee, and correct me if I'm wrong, Portia, uh, has plenty of opportunity to present simple data to the public, but I mean, to say the leader or beyond the website information. Personally speaking, I found much of the information that was presented helpful. Uh, I'm fairly informed, yet I didn't know it. I'm sitting on the committee to encourage the committee uh, to consider their communication outreach efforts, in particular by uh, the leader, with little tidbits of information that might draw everybody in. That's it. Okay, thank you. Portia. Okay. Um, yeah, following on Marvin's comments, we are in the midst of, uh, with the consultants from the Transportation Committee, doing a transportation plan, and a lot of that begins to look at complete streets, bicycles, sidewalk continuity, uh, neighborhood continuity, and so on, which plays certainly into the development issues here with long-range planning, and um, other than that, I am I am thankful for the conversation this morning. I think it was extremely helpful, and I I, I guess I agree that um, the council can give us feedback, and that's why we're here. <laughs> All right, thank you, John. Yeah, one of the comments. I'm just so happy to be here. Thank you. The discussion that happened today, so I think this could be one of my favorite committees. So I'm I'm really excited. Um, just a couple things, you know, we have our next counselor corner live on January 25th and the topic is going to be on the school. 
um, really what we're going to do is use that as some opportunity for people to provide input on why they think the community voted the way they did, try and see if we can have some small breakout groups for people to say, okay, with what we discussed, how would you, what, what was the solution you would mm -hmm. offer? And just really just to brainstorm and get some feedback going and then talk about what those solutions say about our values um, as a community. One of the things that I've heard, which again, I kind of see coming up for the topic we just had, um, was a lot of people still have a concern, especially those who have been in Scarborough for a long time, this notion that Scarborough has become a city and the thought of having higher buildings, even though we're not talking massive skyscrapers, yeah. you know, feeds into that notion of a concern that many residents will have in our community about, you know, the image of Scarborough and, mm -hmm. and so again, I would encourage you guys if you have time to come and attend and just listen because it may be relevant to future conversation. Um, the other piece that I sat on the SEDCO meeting where we met with the Gorham um, group that I think would be an interesting future agenda for this group to discuss is if and when the, the Gorham connector comes, what does that mean from a zoning perspective? Because right now I think it's it's RF or it's something that right. yeah and you know clearly they want to use it as an opportunity to foster and promote and or um, economic development and and commercial is what I took away from the conversation and I'm just wondering is there an opportunity to kind of revisit that if that that comes into play would there be something that we want to revisit that zoning to see is that something we want to partner with them on because again that 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 in my mind is yeah. a huge opportunity to drive further economic development in the community. And so I think that would just be an interesting topic for this group to explore. Okay. Um I guess from my perspective, thank you for being here. Uh, we did not have enough council participation, I think, in 2023. So having you here and actually having Bill here as well uh, was was good. I mean, it's it's. I'm Amber's new Bill. Yeah, that's great. I don't know where my head is today. Don't. And it kills me because we were sitting here talking about playing golf before the meeting. You know, we're going to get together, play some golf. Um, so. Yeah, I mean, having that input is, I think, very important. And having you see our process, I think, is very important as well. So thank you and look forward to seeing you on a monthly basis. So that's it. I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. I would entertain that motion to adjourn. And thank you for being chair again, sir. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I think Hi, I saw say a second. Uh, Any discussion? Seeing none, all in favor? And thank you very much. We'll see you next month.